Rosemary Castoro was an artist who was born in New York in 1939 in Brooklyn and she was based in the city her entire life until she passed away in 2015. Uh, she initially went to study art at Pratt Institute, um, but she was involved in a variety of media there, including graphic art and graphic design, uh, but also dance and choreography, as well as eventually specializing in painting. She graduated from Pratt in 1964, and that's where the exhibition begins its story with her earliest paintings subsequent to uh, Pratt Institute. And we follow her career for the first 15 years until 1979. And it's at this time that she's involved in minimal art circles along with her then husband, Carl Andre, um, but also peers and friends such as Frank Stella, Sol LeWitt, um, Eva Hesse and Agnes Martin. And after being involved with painting for a number of years, she moves on to be involved in conceptualism and in post-minimal art. And she is based in the same studio in Soho from 1963 until the end of her life. So she's really someone who's rooted in a New York context and within the circles of the avant-garde of the 1960s and 70s. And that's where the exhibition focuses its attention in those years. So the, the exhibition begins with Castoro's earliest works from following her graduation um, and they are square format paintings which gradu gradually develop from a more painterly abstraction to tessellating uh, shapes that become T shapes and then Y shapes. And then they move apart and become isolated on a monochrome ground. The color is also used as the titles for all of these works. And this makes this work very much um, minimalist in its conception as well, because the other name for the minimalist artists was literalist. So these are very literal abstract paintings about the particular colour combinations. From the early 1960s and the paintings that we uh, saw in the first room, Castoro went through several series of different uh, kinds of abstract painting through the mid to the later 1960s, each time becoming more monochrome and increasingly emphasizing both the structure of the work and the use of line. This led her to a more conceptual practice, which she then focused on between 1968 and 1970, um, abandoning painting seemingly and focusing on performative works, on concrete poetry and on works which investigated time. Some of the works that she made at this time were featured in two different groups of exhibitions. One, the street works, which were a series of um, exhibitions staged in the street and she made performances for these different street works at different moments during 1969. Um, performative actions where she did things like uh, tie a tin of paint to her bicycle, make a hole in it and dribble paint up and down the streets of Manhattan to create something called Ariadne's Trail or she put metallic pa um, tape on the street to create uh, an atoll out of the island of Manhattan by circling a city block. She was also featured in key exhibitions curated by Lucy Lippard, two of the earliest numbers exhibitions where again she made architectural scale works that intervened in the existing architecture 
one of which cracked the architecture, the other made a room called Room Revelation involving a dimmable light bulb triggered by the presence of the viewers. So an early conceptual installation piece which was participatory. During the late 1960s, uh, Rosary Castoro shifted from making paintings um, using uh, graphic tools such as prismacolor markers, so making works on canvas from pens essentially, to making concrete poems from these same marker pens. Um, she also formed these poems into multiple poems works which uh, or works formed from multiple poems which she created into uh, performative pieces. She also made intermedia works from these poems so photographing each page of poetry she made a series of slides and then recorded herself reading the poems and this was a work that she called A Day in the Life of a Conscientious Objector from 1969. Lift, steam escape, quick click shut, momentum slam, rotation release, spin, 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 splinter flings, flying springs, coil into, counterclockwise screw, crowd in aisle, Step over puddle, arrive dry side. Spread oil slick, deposit dried rot, light into faggots, crisp crackle, crunch. Protect outer cover, nurture withheld shit, stop gas leak. Some of her most conceptual works, but again show this uh, thinking about time and this concern with time in her work. This intense two-year period of working in a conceptual manner, Castoro went back to painting, um, in part as a result of the architectural projects she'd made in Lucy Lippard's shows, both the gallery cracking and also room revelation. She returned to painting, um, but in a more spatialized manner and more architectural scale. Um, the works that she made were on panels and she brushed gesso onto the panels which were laid flat on her studio floor and then once those were dry the heightened texture was picked out with graphite. So these works combine architecture, painting, sculpture and also drawing um, and this hybridity is really something that's very characteristic of her work. The body is always present in her work, uh, either very subtly or, or made more explicit. And in these works, they, like minimalist sculpture, address the body of the spectator. They occupy, they occupy the space of the spectator. So these pieces occupied her for a space of about three years. Um, and she made numerous architectural works along these lines as well. Uh, sometimes brush strokes appearing from different parts of architecture or like hairs growing out of the corners of architecture or from the ceilings of architecture, they imply a certain relation of the body to architecture as well. Um, but it's also always a kind of fragmentation of the body. Castoro had made her panel paintings, which she called her freestanding panels. Um, she had referred to herself as a painter-sculptor. Um, and this is very characteristic of the kind of hybridity of her work. In the later 1970s, in fact, 1974 to 5, she shifted her practice once again, but 
this time towards a more um, sculptural practice um, and much more related to the work of, of uh, post-minimalism, what we call post-minimalism. Um, and yet the hybridity of the panels is also evident here. Uh, she was using epoxy resin, which was then pigmented, very dark pigments, but the closer you look, the more colors you can see in them. So the surfaces are actually very painterly. And at the same time, uh, she decided to paint her studio white, um, and that enabled these pieces to stand out against the background as if they were drawn lines on a sheet of paper. So she had, at this point, begun to describe her work as sculptural drawing. So again here we see the combination of painting and sculpture and drawing in, in the same work. But it also is something that refers again to the women's body um, in a more colloquial term. And that is also made explicit by the comments she made about the work. Uh, she described it as a trap for a mate and she said beaver's trap is sexy. So again, these kind of themes of uh, gender, sexuality and a kind of combativeness is, is characterized uh, in these pieces. Another aspect of the show is um, the, the decision that we made to feature many of her journals in the exhibition and to create a frieze from the photography that's in the journals. Um, from 1969 onwards, she was an avid diarist. Um, but the diaries or journals are not straightforward records of her daily activities. They're also sketchbooks, records of works in progress, plans for works, um, ideas for works that never happened. But they contain a, new, a number of really extraordinary photographs that Castoro made of herself using a self-timing camera. So she was able to set the camera and then get in front of the camera and take pictures of herself, either making work, so they're process photographs, or in many more ambiguous photographs, um, performing or being seen with her works. So dance is constantly underpinning the work and these performative photographs really reveal how important that side of things was to her as well. Mm -hmm.